Okay, today's video is a recap video because there were so many steps to this shot that to actually show much of the live process would be really, really um, cumbersome and time consuming and I would have to do a speed video, blah, blah, blah. So here's, here's the shot. This is, uh, I guess we'll give it a little bit of context here by going back to the storyboard. Show you what the heck's going on. Okay. So, Tina, dressed up as a man, has a knife on him, says, all right, kid, you know, hit the road, the village is that way, and he says something along the lines of, um, well, uh, the village, the village really doesn't work for me right now. She says, why not? And he says, he's like, okay. It all started with a, a monkey. And he looks up and he sees the monkey. Up there. And there's the monkey. Now, you can see from this drawing actually where this started. Um, <laughs> this has some... <laughs> glaring errors in it but I was kind of jotting the thing out in Krita to just kind of get it blocked in and feel the timing see if it was going to work kind of thing and um, honestly the biggest problem is that the monkey is really off character so ignore that mask man behind the curtain <laughs> so I, I wound up with the background image and then the in in broadly speaking the steps were to go ahead and animate it in puppet style in Blender using the grease pencil. And it looks like, let me just see here. Yeah, it, it actually looks like the, the original. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. So we have the sketch. So we can turn the sketch on. And I guess we'll just, uh, I think, what do I have? I, got to remember my my shortcut key I had a shortcut key for soloing the layers and I haven't used it in a long time and um, so anyway I'll just manually turn these guys off so that kind of gets us to a place where we can look at what actually took place here so step one was actually doing this because it was really all being done in Krita and but you know there's two camera moves within the shot I wanted to have some parallax there were a number of reasons to consider breaking it up and bringing it into either open tunes or blender and just for the heck of it I decided to use blender uh, you'll see a couple things about that that turned out to be a bit of a win but uh, so long story short is if we if we look at what does the background consist of this is actually really typical for the show, which is fill the area with black and then add a blue gradient because the current shot is taking place mostly at night. And so these are the layers. You can kind of see what they look like in isolation here. You can see how rough they are. Um, and actually, we need to go back here. Sorry. So little bit of tree action moon is nothing but a gradient I added these um, cloud layers which are essentially nothing more than really black and white wisps that were then motion blurred this way and stretched wide and then I just turned the opacity down so not much to it and then that provided the backdrop and then the tree actually has um, some of this bush action sort of baked into it so this is where I was at with the background and I just really what I did was I rendered out the tree by itself and then the rest of the background by itself as well so that pretty much gives you the background situation okay but now if you look at this you can see there's a lot more detail in the tree and the reason is that when the shot was um, well, you know, like this, it basically looked fine, rough, like it was. But once you had one, two camera moves, 
and you're zipped in this far, all of a sudden it uh, started to fall apart. So I had to address the detail situation. Uh, before I get into the animation, I guess I'll talk about that detail business couple things that I sort of observed about this as I was going along and by the way there's actually a um, a uh, filter mask on this for a simple curves adjustment you know so we can dial in the contrast and then there was also this um, extra layer to put the shadow where the monkey was so we'll come back to those things probably if I don't forget but the kind of a cool takeaway on the painting work is one thing I've noticed with if you have these organic sort of materials like a tree like bark the the prevailing direction of the texture is let's just say in this case it's kind of vertical um, in other words you got these these sort of you know these sorts of shapes working together okay and what I find is if you if you lay that in, you can you can dial in the tonality by going with a really dark color but cranking the opacity down so that you can sort of build it up. So that's kind of useful. And obviously you could do the same thing with highlights. So you could come in here and actually build that up if you wanted to, right? Okay. Um, but what I was going to say about the vertical thing is that I find with like with the rocks and the trees that when you're dealing with a natural organic texture that's essentially oriented in one direction, it can be very helpful to paint the details in the opposite direction. So in other words, if you look closely at the bark, what you see is that the actual texture is horizontal. It's running in the direction contrary to the main prevailing direction. And that seems to be a pretty good way to dial in um, a bit of noise into a texture that basically looks pretty good so again we'll come back to the um, the background and how getting the monkey to sit in the background so the the next step was I I decided to go ahead and pencil test it which is what I did here and so I the timing on this is probably screwed up I would guess well maybe not but because um, I did have to do some retiming and ultimately retimed it in Krita as well actually so, yes, because actually what happened was I had this section and I was not initially going to do the whole shot because when the shot starts out, he's actually in this pose here. And then after a bit, he transitions to this situation, which is what you see there. Okay, so in Blender, initially the pencil test did not have the first thing because I wasn't, I was going to marry the two together, what I had done in Krita with what I did in Blender. But what I decided was since he really was a little off character, let's go ahead and fix him. And I did something very unusual, which was to um, embrace basically a puppet style animation approach. So let me unsolo that layer. And now what we'll do is we'll just turn on the layers and you can see what's actually going on here so going back to the top you've got a head layer there's the turn up over there in the on the side his body his um, right hand his tail and so the idea was just to be able to animate all these elements separately and essentially animate each component as little as possible. I think I actually started out with the tail because I knew it was going to be easy. So that's it. That's all the tail ever does. So you just have a few keys at the end and that's that. The right hand actually let's turn the tail back off. So this this was really only drawn twice. I, well there's a little tween there but and then this was just just grab all the what what you would do here is you would um, grab the strokes so let me solo the layer just so I don't grab a bunch of stuff I didn't mean to grab so you just grab the strokes and then what I do with something like this is click somewhere in the 3d view uh, viewport 
in order to set the uh, the rotation axis and then what you do is you hit the period key which causes it to rotate wherever the cursor is if you hit the comma key it's going to rotate on the the actual geometry so I find myself using this more often than not because a lot of times it is things like appendages that you want to be able to just turn on a joint right so so that's that the body this was essentially um well here's here's the the, the trick to this and again let me solo this layer come on now there we go the trick to this i drew the arm later okay so initially i'm just dealing with the body and so I'm about to screw it up, but trust me, when I did it, it wasn't screwed up because the arms got added later. But the idea was to go in here and say, let's just grab, I'm doing control drag with my left mouse, and then again, click somewhere in here. And because we have the, um, the let's get the exact name of it here, proportional editing tool, which is invoked with the O key. There's really two ways you can do the proportional editing tool. And if you're doing puppet animation, they're both quite useful. But one is to use connected, which means only, and that's probably what I did here, so that the legs weren't affected. If I use projected 2D, which is quite useful, but if I use that, then when I rotate it, you can see that it affects the leg. So what I wanted to do is just grab some, some points in the strokes just for the body part and then use it in, use the proportional editing tool in connected mode so that only what I want to have bend bends. So that's how the body worked. Pretty simple actually. Not big changes there. Um, okay, unsolo that layer. The turn up, I'm not going to even mess with the turn up, that's not important. It's obvious what I did there. Okay, probably his head is, uh, you know, pretty obviously the the biggest um, job. And what that involved was, number one, in this case, just take all the strokes and move them around. That was really about it. And that just added a keyframe I did not want to add. Okay, and then, having done that, go in and use the grease pencil to... Um, just erase some stuff and redraw the eyes however I wanted to draw them. Obviously that's the wrong uh, color that I'm using there. So it would have been kind of do like this. And as I mentioned in a recent video, if you look at it at, at the actual size it's going to render, you tend to get a true picture of how the um, how the grease pencil strokes are going to look. Now, right now, this is actually incorrect. This is supposed to be HD, not HDTV. I think I got that one right. Let's find out. Yep. Okay, so there you go. So that looked okay. Um, back here. The chew. This was a pain in the rump. Basically, what I did. Let me turn the head off so you can see. What I did was I actually just animated this, and I, and it's only two keys. It's two drawings. One, two, and then I just repeated them, and kind of carefully overlaid them over the head in the right way so that it worked. And then I went ahead and baked the swallowing action into that layer as well because it's just there's nothing going on in these keys so I figured I'd just combine them so that's that and voila turn the sketch off and you have a monkey okay so and if we go all the way back to the beginning I actually took all the keys this was by the way done it at eight frames a second so really it was starting out here so what I had done was grabbed all the keys by just hitting the A key over the dope sheet and then you just drag all the keys to wherever you want to put them to make room and then copy these keys back here and then start making changes to make it all work. So this is essentially not too different. 
um, other than the change in the position of the head, the eyes, and the main thing would be the hand. And then here I obviously had to animate his little waving fingers. And then from here to here was just a static shot. So this was just a matter of taking this line of keys, box select, B key, and you just hit duplicate, which is shift D, and wango bango, everything is ready to go. Now the problem was though, again, this whole thing was actually um, playing at 8 frames a second. So the way I solved that, I'll just do it in reverse right now, is here you've got all the keys for all the layers. Okay. Select all. You got to make sure that your starting, um, your playhead, if you will, is at zero. It's at the beginning of the, the piece. And then I'm going to go, let me see if this works. We'll go, I don't know if I can actually scale this by a, a divisor. I guess it'd be scale 0.333. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty close. Yeah, I think that actually worked. Okay, so that's what the keys looked like. And now I needed to spread it out to 24 frames a second. So then I just hit S3, which is S for scale. You're scaling the keys, the, the um, yeah, I guess you just say the animation keys. And you're scaling them by a factor of 3, which takes it from um, 8 frames a second to 24. And Okay, so then what I did was pre-rendered this because I knew I was going to need to add shadows and also a few other tidbits. So I'm going to not save the changes on that. And let's jump over here to Krita. Okay, so in Krita what I did, there was actually a couple small instances, I will say where I actually changed the timing. I left the length of the image sequence. So so let's put it this way. What actually happened was came into Blender and loaded the monkey, the tree, and the background as images on planes. In other words, add images as planes and I turned them I turned on emit mode and told it to animate image sequences so that if I used a sequence which I only did with the monkey I did not do obviously with the tree and the background but I'm I made them all emit mode and the reason I did that and this came in quite handy is if we take the dope sheet and go back to the dope sheet view instead of the grease pencil view one of the things I animated was the emit value so let's actually go to this view where we can see the material and for the monkey I actually keyframed the emit mode and here I'll show what happens if you change it so you can just really dial in the lighting right okay so I keyframed it set it to point what is it point one zero so ten percent and then I duplicated the key here so that when the camera smash zooms to here, you can see it animating over here. I just set another keyframe a little bit brighter. And uh, it's actually arguable that the whole shot could be improved slightly by turning it up even a little bit more. So I'm going to actually do that right now. Hit the I key over top of that to set another keyframe just to see if I like it better. Okay, so here's the shot, select none, and let's see how it plays. He waves. Yes, yeah, so for the final render, I'm going to go ahead and leave that slightly brighter like I just did. Um, I'm seeing a little artifact right there. That looks like a grease pencil stroke. Oh, there we go. Problem solved. Um, okay, so once it zoomed into this level here or this you know once we're cropping in on our background image I really could tell a that the tree was not detailed enough and B I really wanted to have a shadow underneath the monkey here right so uh, hence I came in here and added this layer which just darkened that up and then I also initially the tree looked like that it had the detail but it really didn't have enough contrast and the cool thing was, you can bring it in here and actually see 
just hit F10 and see what the final render is going to look like. Basically what you see in the, since I'm doing an OpenGL render, what you see in the viewport really is pretty much exactly uh, what you're going to get, other than the fact that there's a, a little bit of anti-aliasing around your um, the, the images that are mapped to the planes around their, you know, their alpha channel where they're transparent. There's a little bit of artifacting you can see in the viewport like that that kind of goes away when you render. So that's that. And you can actually dial that in a bit. The render options, you could do full sample. I have anti-aliasing turned on. Let me see what full sample does. I don't know if that really helps. Uh, maybe. I don't think it makes much difference, to tell you the truth. I I generally have it off because I just, yeah, it, it does it does soften it a little bit more. You can see this is a little bit harsher. So I think for final rendering purposes, yes, let's turn on full sample. So, yeah, it, these pixels here were not present in the, the other render so anyway it does make a difference so the cool thing is I could I could look at my animation which by the way what about the animation so obviously the monkey doing everything he's doing is just baked into the image sequence so it just plays back uh, in the blender 3d view so there's no grease pencil animation going on here that was all done in the other scene the other blender scene where I did the pencil test and then inked and painted uh, tell you the truth in total I don't recommend it. Um, the puppet animation approach, I do not find very uh, fluid, and it's not that fun. Okay, it, the result is okay; it's pretty good, but it's definitely not my preferred method. I, I just, you know, it was kind of an experiment in a way, uh, and a, a bit of an exercise for me. So, and it came out good, so no complaining. But anyway there you go that's the shot and why the rest of the image sequence isn't showing up I suspect I know the reason but let's see what happens if we actually uh, reopen this Got no idea yeah so I, I need to go ahead and re-render from Krita but w another thing I was doing was um, once I got him mapped to the tree I should probably show it this way. It's going to be hard to see. I'm in object mode. Let me see if I've got... Did I use an empty? Actually, I don't think I used an empty. I used an empty on the grease pencil version of it. Here, I just resized the, the plane. So, this guy right here. So, once he got resized in position, because initially he was... Um, probably well if we go back to the beginning obviously the original art would have been something like this okay so in any case once we got him in there I realized that I needed to hide his hand because in the original art I had just extended it knowing I was going to need to do something with it later right and then what I did, this is a quite useful thing you can do in Krita. You wouldn't want to have to erase a piece of this out of the actual keyframe animation. That would be a real major pain because you could do it. Okay, let me say this. If you use the eraser and that hand is in the same position while other stuff is animating, like what you see here, because this is all baked into a single level, there's no way you're going to erase the same piece twice so what that means is wherever you erase it it's gonna chatter when it plays back so that's a non-starter now there is a way you can do it by editing each of the individual keys and that would be to do a selection like this and then hit the delete key and then just keep going through all your keyframes and hitting delete over and over that would erase the same thing all the way through but obviously that's a big pain in the neck and not only that but very importantly there's not an easy way to change it later is there a better way that's the question and the answer is yes indeed what you do is you create a layer and you put it in erase mode then if you paint on here 
um, if this was actually in normal mode, you'd see it's just a bunch of black squiggles. But in erase mode, it erases anything that's underneath it. And that's cool. That's procedural. What do I mean by that? It means that I can save this, render the whole thing. Um, obviously, you don't want to have to re-render 17 times, but you can bring it in here and then you find out, and by the way, this did happen, you find out, oh man, it's not quite in the right spot. Doggone it. What am I going to do? Well, in this case, all you would do is grab your B key and just do a little bit more of a squiggle. That's it. And I'm going to save that because this has to be re-rendered anyway. And then, um, so this layer gave me my shadows. I had to go ahead and animate the shadows on the monkey. That was going to be, it, it, it's better in Blender 2.8 actually. If you're doing the grease pencil in 2.8, Blender has a feature that I can't show right now, but what it does is it lets you have like a transparent black if you're using it as a shadow. And it does the same thing Krita does where it does this. In Krita, it's called Lock Alpha. It means that the that layer is going to be restricted to the layers underneath. So wherever you've got color underneath, that's where you see this layer, and outside of it, you don't see it. So I think what happens when you turn it off, the Lock Alpha off and on is self-explanatory. Well, Blender 2.8 has the same feature in the Grease Pencil. Blender 2.79 doesn't. And for me, I didn't mind bringing it into Krita for that, re for that because I knew there were a couple other things I was going to have to do that were not going to be easy in, in Blender at all. Number one, if I had to retime it, which I did, uh, but more importantly, stuff like, let me see here. Where is it? There was a keyframe. Yeah, right there. When he brings his arm down, I wanted to put in motion blur. And that was dead easy. I just took the, um, I just took my this paintbrush, and and made it fairly transparent like that, and just scribbled over it, and that just turned it into a nice motion blur. So, I'd say that's a keeper. So with that, I need to now re-render the monkey, and then just reload the blender scene and everything will just update so that will fix the the little hand issue which you really can't see you know it's a, that's a pretty minor issue but we might as well get it right as long as we're here and so here's the final result mm, we'll just do control up and go Yeah, and by the way, okay, so now it's going crazy. That That's because I need to re... Uh, it's a strange thing, actually. If Blender has a proper image sequence and you re-render part of it, it'll it'll puke on the images that weren't re-rendered. So it's a bit strange. Uh, it's I would think it has something to do with the way that Blender is storing... I, I don't know. It actually doesn't make sense because I completely reloaded the Blender scene. So... You know, it's just an image sequence, so there's really no reason why it should choke on the un uh, the unre-rendered images. But for some reason, it does. So I do need to re-render the whole image sequence. But anyway, that's that. Got through that shot. That was a probably the most complex shot I've done in the show so far, and uh, came out well. But with that, I will say we are done. Up oh, half an hour seems about right. And as you guys know, there will be more later.